Hi everyone. I'm really excited to make this video today because I'm going to show you the new version of Moat, which is fully integrated into GitHub, which you can now download as a package. So I kind of wanted to start with talking about the history of Moat. And it really was an idea to make effect sizes simpler for all kinds of researchers. And so with the current trend in data to focus on reproducibility and evidence of our data rather than p-values, we really wanted to make the ability to calculate effect sizes a lot easier, um, a little bit also to focus on the confidence intervals of those effect sizes. So not only do I have uh, Cohen's D, for example, I also have the information about the range of um, values that one might expect. That will help us better plan studies because we can maybe take the lower confidence interval of our effect size to use instead of the effect size itself. Um, but it also like allows us to present, present evidence in a new way. Uh, the problem with confidence intervals on effect sizes is that there have been several reliable papers that show that at least Cohen's D is a non-centralized distribution, and that's not really easy to do by hand. Um, so we hired a very smart person to help us write a program to um, make this more visual and a little bit easier, and that's where the original version of Moat came up, and that's what I have pulled up. So it's a Java-based program that allowed people to type in their results um, whatever options they had, and it would produce the effect size and the confidence interval of the effect size. So for example, I'm looking at the dependent T based on averages on the denominator rather than the standard deviation of the difference scores. And so I could type in that the first time that people scored a 2, the second time they scored a 1, so that's our mean difference score of 1. Let's say the standard deviation was 0.5 each time and we had 50 people in our study. That will calculate our t-statistic, which is used to create the non-central uh, t-distribution. And it would tell me that my Cohen's d was 2, because I'm not good at making up examples, and that the range of that was 1.5 to 2.5-ish. Um, and this program works great for a while. It creates some cute pictures. The biggest problem was that when we went to expand this from d-size effects, to um, F tests, math became difficult. <laughs> so it just would iterate forever and then crash. So um, not being a huge fan of crashing people's computers and really our research lab moving into R, we've now programmed the whole thing in R um, with the goal of recreating this app as a shiny application where people could use it on our website if they aren't familiar with R and R, or maybe aren't very good at R. Um, so hang in there, all you SPSS people. Um, and giving people more flexibility if you do use R. So we're kind of ditching the Java version um, because it also causes a lot of problems with Windows 10. Um, and just generally getting away from using the Java app where we have to program everything ourselves and using R because it comes with these native calculations, and but still recreating this where everyone can use it. So the ultimate goal is still for to make this easy for everyone. So this next semester, so fall 2017, we're working on creating um, I'm Learning Shiny and seeing if we can create apps that sort of recreate this picture um, where you don't have to know R to use this. It's a little bit of the history of Moat. I've been working on this for a long time. Uh, and the goal now is um, to present it to a lot of people. So let's look at how that's done in R. Um, and if you've never installed anything from GitHub, I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, so the first thing you're going to need is the DevTools library, which if you're using R Studio, you can just click on Packages, Install, and it's DevTools, D-E-V-T-O-O-L-S. Okay. I already have DevTools, but I'll just tell it to install either way. Um, and so that will install this package that you need. And then to install things from GitHub, it's actually really easy. So you just type um, dev, and let me make this a little bigger, Ooh, goodness, tools, colon, colon, that tells R what package to look in to find this, um, github, 
uh, no, I'm sorry, it's install first. I said it's really easy and then I forgot. <laughs> install underscore GitHub. Okay. And then at this point you need to know um, where that package is. So for our particular library, you're gonna use quotes and it's a doom lab, D-O-O-M-L-A-B, which is the name of our research lab, forward slash, the one that leans forward, that's next to the shift key on QWERTY keyboards, uh, moat all in caps, so M-O-T-E. Okay. Um, so then when you're in R, you just hit enter. Um, it's not gonna install for me because I have the latest version uh, and it hasn't changed any, but if it, you are downloading this for the first time, it will um, install the package for you. And then you would be able to find it here under packages. Um, one thing we're still working on is our documentation. So you'll see that it is um, kind of light, uh, but we really wanna make sure that this works and that people can test it while we're working on the, the um, explanation pages. But what we have here is um, a bunch of effect sizes and an APA calculator, which I'm pretty proud of. What the APA function does is it actually is really for formatting. So we've recently gotten into Markdown and creating entire documents in R, so I don't have to use Word, whew, thank goodness. Um, but the trouble is that let's say you're trying to format a P value, which doesn't have a leading zero, and then a D value, which does have a leading zero. So trying to um, keep all of those straight. And so we just created a little function for you that um, you can put in values or whole column of values. Um, it'll also kind of work on a list uh, where you format a number that you'd like. You tell it how many decimals you want and um, whether or not you want the leading zero or not. This will return, oops, I already found one typo. Gotta fix that. But um, this will return a character string though. So we could type APA, let's say we want to format um, 0 0.5678, whatever, to three decimals with a leading zero. Okay. It also helps if you load the library first. Derp. Okay. And that will return a rounded number um, using the round function uh, and then format it to three decimals. Let's say I wanted to not include that leading zero, that'll return the character without the zero. And so that's why it returns a character string is because um, if you don't include the zero, it has to be a character uh, or it will add it back automatically. So um, if we force things to be numeric, R require pretty much forces them to have that zero in the front. Okay. So a way to format the number of decimals that you're using. Um, let's say you wanna see how that looks under the hood. So if you wanna view any of our calculations, um, what you can do is once you have the library open, type the name of the function without the open and close parentheses, and that will show you the inside of the function. So this particular thing uses the format um, function in base R and sprint F to deal with the, um, the non-leading zeros. So some other things that we have um, are the different effect sizes for D, uh, glasses delta, hedges G's correction, um, any type of R squared statistics, so eta, partial eta, um, GES. You can't really do omega right now, we're still working on that one. Odds ratios, so odds, risk ratios. Um, uh, log odds, correlation, and um, Kramer's V for chi-square. The way all of these are formatted is they have the statistic that you're calculating in the front. So these are all D functions, delta, eta. Then they have for at least mostly D, um, what statistic it goes with. So dependent T, dependent T, independent T, uh, prop test, proportion comparison, single sample T, D to R calculations, um, ANOVA for ADA, uh, but that could be, I could also be regression, so any form of uh, least squares analysis, and correlation and chi-square. The real action for the D ones come at the end, so this is dependent T based for whether average standard deviation is the denominator, 
uh, dependent t with a different score denominator, dependent t of the different scores calculated from t only. So if you're trying to do a meta-analysis, independent t from t versus independent t from means. Same thing down here with single sample t. Okay. So in all of these, let's look at this one. Um, these hopefully have a little bit more on the description on what's actually happening. And it gives you an example of how to run one of these. So there's lots of dots, but that was to help keep it straight what's going on. So let's copy this one. When they return, it tries to, I tried to set it up where it returns just by everything possible that you could want. Okay. So dependent T based on the different scores of the denominator is going to return D. So it returns a list. Um, so the D statistic for this one is 1.67. It returns the low confidence interval, the high confidence interval. That mean difference score, you entered that, but we'll give it back to you. The confidence interval of the mean um, based on a normal distribution. Uh, so mean for low, mean high. The standard deviation of the differences, which you also entered as part of the function here. Uh, the standard error of the differences in degrees of freedom, and if appropriate, the t value from that test and the p value from that test. So it also runs uh, the type of t in the background. Uh, so I could save all of this as a list and then use it later to um, you call for another function or to print out if you're using markdown. So we tried to give you back everything you gave us as well as everything that we used to calculate. If you want to see what's going on under the hood here, let's do this one. Oops, sorry. Um, we are using the MBEST library, which has really solved about 95% of my problems in making this public um, because it has a really great non-centrality parameter calculation. We were working with one before that we had sort of hobbled together from the internet um, and theirs is much more stable than ours so this will give you um, the calculate the non-centrality parameter that is used to get to the confidence interval for d okay. so it will require that you have the mbest library okay. but then we calculate d t so you can see exactly how we're calculating all these different functions I have told MBEST to suppress warnings, but it doesn't all the time. So you may get a, a note about the limitations of our calculations when running these things. Um, but either way, you can see what we're doing. You can help us maybe find some typos because I'm not perfect. Um, or just kind of critique the way that we are calculating some of these different effect sizes, which hopefully are all correct. Lots of work on this. Um, so we have a bunch of different ones and then for each one it also tells you what the arguments need to be. So for single sample t you need to tell us the sample mean, the population mean, the sample standard deviation, the sample size, and you can also set different significance levels. So if you wanted a 99% confidence interval you could set alpha to 0.01. You can also get very specific, you can have an 87.3575 confidence interval for whatever reason I don't know, but you could. Um, so suggestions from anyone on different effect sizes that we can include, comments on our code. We're really excited to present this to everybody. Um, it's all available on Git. You can also make comments over there, so you can email them to me. Or if you are already on Git, you can go to our page and make comments on the specific repository we are talking about. So thanks everybody for downloading our package. At some point, um, we're hoping to move this into the actual CRAN library um, after maybe we get some feedback on what we're doing right and maybe what we could do better. So thanks for watching.